Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge & Company. City College stands today precisely for what its founder, Townsend Harris, said in 1847, the education of the children of the whole people, a place where children of the rich and the poor take their seats to learn together. Its rich history of accomplishment, diversity, tolerance, and exploration continues today under the leadership of its dynamic president, Lisa Stiano Coico. Welcome to me. Thank you. It's an amazing institution, isn't it? It is a fascinating and wonderful institution. Mm -hmm. It's, in fact, a privilege to be the leader of this That's institution. The, well, I think they're very lucky to have you because I've watched and I can tell the energy and interest that come out. Mm -hmm. It's the first college of the city university system. Mm -hmm was also the first public college in the country? It's one of the first public urban colleges in the country. It's established in 1847. And that legacy, I love that quote, that Townsend yeah, Harris quote, it's because it still lives on today in our students. Yeah. If you see them, you walk across the campus, and you were lucky because you went to music and yeah, art right, the high the school there. Yes. on the campus at the time. And there are 105 languages spoken, including English, students from over 150 countries. It <laughs> just reflects the world and it reflects the dream that first generation immigrants, no matter where you come from, you can pursue your dream at City College and get your college degree it's and good. really yeah. and that's, prosper. That's what its purpose was. It's, that's what its purpose right. was. How many students are there? We have about 15,800 students, close to 16,000 students. And they speak how many different languages? 105, including English. So great. So you have, it's a very comprehensive offering, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Go on, tell me, what sure. is it? We have all of the, li the traditional liberal arts, okay? So there's English, sociology, political science, and um, but in addition, we're the only School of Architecture in the CUNY system, and I believe we're the only public school of architecture in the New York area. We also have the only public school of engineering. And we have the Sophie Davis School of Biomedical Education, which prepares physicians. So we have an incredible offering throughout. So anything you want to study or imagine you would like to study, you can study at City College. We have a, our, the physician in my family, my husband's mm -hmm. doctor, went to that school, Sophie, what, Sophie? Sophie Davis. Davis School. Um, and he was an Irishman from Brooklyn. His father was a, a, a battalion chief in the fire department. He said he grew up in this kind of Catholic surround world. And all of a sudden, he's at City College, which he said just made the difference in his life. It showed him everything else. And, it, and he's a wonderful doctor. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's what gives our students such education, yeah. too, because they're sitting side by side with students who have completely different world perspectives. You learn more from sitting next to somebody who does not have your viewpoint, yeah. rather than sitting with a whole bunch of homogeneous, uniformly right. uh, looking students. Yeah. So it's really fun. And you're nurturing a science center now. Yes, we are. What is that gonna be? Well, hopefully that will open in 2015. There are two buildings. One of them is the CUNY, it's going to be a, a science campus. It's on the south part of our campus. One is the CUNY building, the Advanced Science Research Center, ASRC, and hopefully will attract faculty members from all throughout the CUNY system to spend time doing research in areas on the campus. Uh -huh. The other is the City College Center for Innovation and Discovery. It's about 200,000 square feet of new laboratory That's space. Really nice. I was up there recently uh, because when I went to school, not everything stopped at 135th That's Street. Right. But now it goes all the way down. And you, yeah. you, you acquired the um, campus of what, Manhattanville? Was it another college or something I, years I ago? I actually, yeah, I, I don't was, know what it sure. was because I wasn't yeah, there yeah. or connected and with all these, at the time. And all the buildings and everything. And yeah. the fact that you have dorm students. We do. We have a 600 bed residence hall now. Where is it? It's, it's right beyond where the science buildings uh -huh. are. It's on the southmost part of the campus. Right. And once those buildings come up it's go and open, it's going to make a wonderful community for students, for graduate students and undergraduate students. And it's a wonderful neighborhood. I don't know if you, I think this is what I learned. It's the site of the Battle of Harlem Heights and the Revolutionary mm -hmm. War. And it's filled with all kinds of history. You get a feeling when you're there. It's very pretty also. It's very beautiful the park. also. It's yeah. very beautiful also. Also, and it's been wonderful for our students and it will be I think really important for graduate students as you know we now have graduate programs that um, the engineering programs are run out of the College of Engineering yes. the PhD yeah. programs and we do joint programs with CUNY in the sciences 
You know, graduate students, particularly in the sciences, they're 24-7. Yeah. So if you call them at 3 in the morning, they're in their labs. Having a residence hall nearby is Such going to be great wonderful. Thing for them. It's going to be wonderful right. for them. So what's it like to be a college president? You have to worry about the students, the faculty, the money that makes the place run, mm -hmm. the place itself, the physical structure. It's been really, it's been wonderful, actually. It's been very exciting. Um, what I've done to help ease myself into that transition is on a monthly basis, I hold an open roundtable in the student cafeteria for students. And on a monthly basis, I hold an open roundtable for faculty in the faculty cafeteria. And what it's given me is a sense students can come Topics are open. They can speak about anything. So and they come. And they come. They're packed. Every month they're packed. Great. I hear narratives, amazing narratives from the students, what their stories are like, what they were like. Because you know I'm a CUNY graduate too, Brooklyn College alum. Um, faculty are able to bring me some of the challenges. Uh, and it's been helpful. So it's been a lot of fun. And I think as, as the Chancellor, Chancellor Goldstein, who's done a fabulous job, has talked about, more than not now, we need to be engaging our alums, our students, our faculty. If we're going to keep moving forward, philanthropy has to be a major part of the equation. But you're very collaborative in your approach. I am. I and, am. And, and that's bringing everybody in, and it's the same thing as engaging all mm -hmm. the other people. But are the students that way? I mean, w sometimes you hear now that younger people are so self-involved and motivated about their own lives. I mean, when I was young, and it was a long time ago, we grew up wanting to contribute to the public good. Is that a concept that you find now for the kids? I do find that. I think more and more now our students want to be part of the public good. They also want to be part of the City College and CUNY community in ways that actually we weren't engaged in in the 70s, um, even though we were engaged in outside activities. Yeah. But, for instance, I have... Um, we. The students came to me. I meet with the student government, who, right. of course, routinely. And a committee of students came as part of this roundtable and said, we want to take back the library. And I said, what, <laughs> what, do what does that mean? <laughs> you want to take back the library? And they were like, OK. We want it to really be a place of learning. We want to change the whole way in which the library is viewed. So working with them, you know, we took couches out and we made more communities in our rotunda, which is really our student center right, right now. We're replacing the library. We're putting in a new tech center. This was all because of student engagement and students wanting, even seniors who knew that they wouldn't benefit, right. wanted to leave a legacy so that other students benefited from behind. I see that all the time at City College. Just and it is, it, part of it is that the students and their backgrounds, I mean, they've worked hard to get to City College, most of them. Yes, they have. It, uh, they, it, yeah, they have. Yeah. You know, they've worked hard. They're also, many of our students are working to support families, their own families, their immediate I families. I think we had a club for students who were mothers and fathers, parents, and we had 1,500 students who were part of it. Incredible. So, Do you have a child care center? We do have a small child care center, um, which we'd like to expand, uh, and we're working on that. We've been very grateful on um, uh, working with city council and other yeah. things to help us work on that. Um, but yeah, I think part of their history, they're the first in their family to go to college. So important. It's so important. And students drop in. I met with a student this morning, Angel Pina, who just graduated and is staying on. And, and he talked about his mother. He said, I couldn't believe my mother. She was running around the campus taking pictures on graduation day. Uh -huh. And it was because he was the first yeah. of his, the sons, to go to college. His mother had achieved a bachelor's degree. Oh, that's not great. <laughs> um, but he was the first of the sons. And there's this sense of you can move forward if you get a college degree. It's very hard. As you know, with a high school degree, what can you do these so days? So do they get jobs? What's happening with jobs? Do you enlist the... the, the the alumni into the job hunting? Thing? We're enlisting, enlisting more and more of our alumni into the job uh, hunting category. Uh, we're starting, we have a career center through our student affairs division, which we want to expand. Uh, teaching resume building, anywhere where we can connect our alums it's, to our students is phenomenal. And you have some very famous alumni. We have amazingly famous <laughs> alumni, and everywhere you go, People you find City College alums. Isn't you know? that great? Yeah. And they've moved into all fields. 
Oh, absolutely. And you talk to people, and I'll meet people. You know, I can just name not only the Nobel laureates, right? right? Nine Nobel laureates right. have come. But you look at the dean of medicine of Harvard Medical School is a City College alum, the head of the Pittsburgh Medical Center City College <laughs> alum. And I know a lot of the scientists because, of course, I'm in right. science. Uh, then you meet, you know, the former head of New York Life. You look at Andy Grove, you know, the co-founder right. of Intel, Len Kleinmark. It, it just go one to the next to the next to the next. You cannot believe, and they're all self-made men and women. Yeah. And that's what our students are today. They're self-made men and women. So how do they differ from an Ivy League campus? I don't like to pit one against the other, but there is a difference, isn't there? Yeah, there, there, there is a difference um, and in a number of ways. I would say the ambition is there no matter what. Whether you're an Ivy League person or you're a city college graduate, there's tremendous determination to succeed. Mm -hmm. The difference that I see is that in the Ivy Leagues, um, you generally have generations of parents that are well connected. Mm. So when their children get their degrees, no matter what it is, sociology, you know, psychology, science, there's a connection and a network built in to the system. The students that come out of City College very often are still coming from very working class, middle class, first generation backgrounds. They don't have that leg up in getting the foot in the door. That's a major difference. Another, that I see. another opportunity for the alumni, mentoring yes. and all that kind of stuff. Yes. You know, that's so that involvement keeps running over and over. Absolutely. Over. Absolutely. Uh, do you have problems with the graduation rate? Yeah, we have a less than what I would love to see as a graduation rate uh, for our students. And what we're doing now is we are working very actively. One of my top priorities, and it's something like the <laughs> faculty, even at the Christmas show, when the faculty were kind of making fun of people, I had somebody come out <laughs> pretending to be me and goes, student success. That's what we <laughs> care about, student success. So I was like, yes getting the message. They're wonderful. We have great yeah. faculty uh -huh. um, and we care about it. So student success is a very big priority of mine and it means making their way easier through giving them the roadmaps. Is your faculty compensated on a comparable basis to uh, private colleges? No. I mean... So how do you recruit people? <laughs> I'm I actually, I'm very blessed, and I'm sure every other president at the CUNY campuses would say the same thing. I'm blessed but, but, because the people are committed to the mission of City College. I have faculty, many, if not most of my faculty, could go anywhere they want. They could go to the Ivy Leagues. They could go to wherever they want in any private. They choose City College because they're so dedicated to the mission of enabling all the whole people to get a college education. So that's a big part of the draw. I think New York City, although the cost of living is tough, is also a big part of the draw because they yeah. have networks and colleagues throughout New York. Um, but that's what cost it is. Cost of living is expensive. Cost of living <laughs> is the biggest challenge, and I yeah. think it's the biggest challenge for junior faculty. So you need faculty housing. That would be a wonderful, <laughs> How wonderful do you feel thing. about Columbia building very near to your area? I'm, as I said, I'm a very collaborative person. <laughs> Are they going to share and, well, residential space with you? They should. Well, <laughs> I, I won't talk about that in the interview, but, um, but I'd love to talk to President Bollinger. But that really is something that the chancellery needs yeah, to, to yeah. work at the chancellery level, honestly. But, but the truth of the matter, it's not only the residential housing. I think the opportunity we have is to develop an innovation corridor. Because um, our engineering college, Columbia has an engineering college, we all have tremendous strengths. And to develop a corridor, which would be a wonderful corridor where innovation could be really seen from where Columbia is, their undergraduate starts up yeah, through City right. College and even to PNS, yeah. um, which is up in the 160s. Right. We have to include Barnard. And Barnard, especially because we want more women in engineering. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's a challenge. It's yeah. still a challenge. Do you find the women students are, would they call themselves feminists? I, I don't necessarily think they would self define as feminists, yeah. but they are feminists. Yeah. They're t strong. They're strong. They're tough. They're tenacious. They won't let anything get in their way. But I'm not sure that they would define it as you and I would have yeah. in the 70s right. called ourselves feminists. feminists right. And you have, a, you have an honors program also. I do. So it's, a, it's an outstanding program, isn't it? It's a superb program. And it offers the, what it 
offers to students is amazing. Yeah, it is <laughs> amazing. Not only the scholarshiping opportunities, but the summer internship opportunities, the study abroad opportunities. Um, the Macaulay Honors Program, which is run out of um, the City University CUNY, um, and Ann Kirshner, uh -huh. um, who uh, leads that effort, has been wonderful. And I've seen our students have done amazingly. Our, one of our Truman Scholars, um, you know, you look at him and, you know, we've had this year, City College, it, it's just, it shows you the kind of the student that we have. We had two Truman Scholars. The only other university to have more than two at a college was Stanford, okay? We had a, a math teach for a America math scholarship where Jean Lu comes from China six years ago, speaking almost no English, wins a $100,000 scholarship to be trained to teach math in public schools. Isn't that amazing? This is, this is the story of City College, and the Honors College has been wonderful. We've actually increased our numbers of honors students at City quite significantly. Did you mean Rhodes Scholar instead of Truman? No, Truman. Truman. We've had two had Rhodes, Rhodes Scholars. scholars yeah, we've had two in the past, yeah. I think, seven or eight years. Yeah. We've had five Truman Scholars in the past it's six amazing. years. It is. It's terrific. They amaze you. <laughs> um, do you find, I mean, how, what's the difference in the tuition? Can I ask that question? It's not free anymore. It's so if you were to take really? Columbia oh. and City College, okay, um, fifty thousand six a year. Yeah, a year. it's it's probably close to that if you talk about all costs yeah, in right. there, not you know right. just the tuition. City College is forty eight hundred dollars, I believe, including fees at at City College. It's fifty one seventy six for the year. That's not for the mm -hmm. semester, and you know. The difference is the incredible. difference is incredible, an enormous difference. You get a world class. You can get a world class education at City College, um, but for students who have no money or first generation, even that forty eight hundred dollars is a lot right. of money. That's right. How did you start all of this? What made you? You're a scientist. I'm a scientist. And I actually, before we even go to that, I have a grandson who's in college uh, way upstate New York, and a fr he just finished his freshman year. And what astonished him was the alcohol that's consumed. And, uh, and then his friends say, oh, it's the same on all the campuses. What do we do about that? Well, and that's an area that you've done some work in. Right? Yeah, that's an area yeah. that I'm working in. Um, I, when I went up to Cornell Ithaca yeah. um, at Cornell University, that's what we saw, that alcohol is it's the major drug of choice nationwide. It's the major drug of choice nationwide um, beyond all the other drugs. And the binge drinking, it doesn't matter. And it's the A students and yeah, it's you know. the D students. It's an enormous, and it's an enormous strain, economic strain and burden. Um, and I became very concerned because you would see on, on Monday mornings, you'd see overdoses, you'd see all kinds of things going on as a, as a result of alcohol. It was, I, several years ago, and the national study was like 96,000 sexual assaults a year in colleges are associated <laughs> with alcohol abuse. So you talk about it. And so what we're looking at are prevention programs. And a lot of the prevention programs that came on the markets, they tout things, but they didn't have real clinical trials, mm. rigorous data. So that's what I'm determined to do. So we've been running trials, randomized trials, to look at what kinds of programs, what kinds of strategies can be used to mitigate that. But why do you think they do that? Is this a burst of their independence and in that they think uh, this is what you do when you grow up? I, I, I do think it's a whole host of things. The first, for if it's a sleepaway college where yeah. people are not a commuter college, right. it's a little bit less of an issue at commuter, commuter colleges. Right. But if it's their first experience and taste of freedom, they go cra And usually the highest risk area is the first six to eight weeks when yeah, they're just crazy about you know being on their yeah. own and being independent. There's also the stress of college. So it's a coping mechanism, okay? You come on and you say, well, if I have a few drinks or if I get drunk on a Saturday night, I can cope with all the stress of the studying for the week. Um, and it's also perceptions that when you survey students, they think that their peers are drinking at much higher rates than they in fact are really drinking. So they have to do it. Yeah, and it's, it's all kind of peer pressure. It's very complex. So how did you become a scientist? Did you always like science? Since second grade. My first book of Rocks and Minerals in second grade of Mrs. Dickinson, it really is true. I, I always loved science, all different kinds of yeah. science. 
But when I got to uh, Brooklyn College, uh, I thought I would be, an, I actually went in thinking I would be an anthropology major and an archaeologist, which is what I was very involved in. As you know, Egyptology mm. was very hot during those mm. periods of time. And I had a first year graduate assistant for Bio 101 Laboratory, and he just turned me on to science. And that was it. I found my passion. So that Do you think, it. I mean, in all these studies of the brain and why we think the way we do and everything else, is there a configuration that distinguishes scientists from other things? I'm always fascinated by that. What makes somebody interested in science and other people having no interest in it at all? I think, you know, when I talk about women, if you would talk yeah. about women, I think right. part of the lack of interest um, that women express is not because they intrinsically have a lack of interest, right. is but because they're discouraged. Right, they think they can't do it. They that's that's they reflected in the old figures about math. Right, right. and it's the same thing. Right. And they think they can't do it, so they right. close they their eyes it. and ears. I don't it's know if, they, you know, I mean, there's left brains and right, right. brains. and <laughs> But you find, for instance, a lot of scientists who are incredibly creative are also wonderful musicians. Right? They, that's true. It's well, that's very, very common. Close very common. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I it's think it's, it's a really, it's fun. And, and if you don't get discouraged, and if you yeah. have, that's where faculty come into me. When you're in college and in high school, it goes down, middle school. Right. If you have faculty with a genuine curiosity, faculty who want to talk about it, that enthusiasm translates itself. But I was always, you know, freshman year, I found it by junior year. Um, you know, I was sleeping over in the laboratory doing my experiments, and I honestly never thought about anything else. Huh? Administration. I assumed I'd always go through, become a scientist, and, you know. So, how, what through. took you from the scientist to the administration? Uh, you know, I was at Weill Cornell Graduate School of Medical uh -huh. Sciences. I did my PhD, and I was pregnant at graduate school. And, and my graduation from graduate school. When did you get married? I got married in 1978. So you were already a college graduate. Yeah, yeah. I grew, we got married. We met at Brooklyn College in yeah. biology class. So <laughs> um, we got married the year after we graduated from college. And I graduated at 20, so I graduated yeah. young. So, um, but it was really funny because I realized there was no child care. There was. I had a seven-day maternity leave when I had my yeah. son, my first child, and. And so I became involved in the Office of Women in Medicine. Oh, great. I and remember that office. It, with that Leela was, Wallace. Yes, for the, fabulous. And I found mentors. And I found that I had a voice. And I found that I that was, was good with it. And then I had wonderful mentors. Tony Gatto, who is the dean of, Me of Weill Cornell Medical School now, he was a wonderful mentor. So I found mentors all the way right. along, the president at Cornell who I had to interview because I was doing a leadership program, and I asked him, I said, what's the best part? And his name was Hunter Rawlings at the time. Uh -huh. What's the best part about being president at Cornell? And he said to me, the undergraduates. Oh, that's nice. I had never trained at a, in, I had been at a medical school. We didn't have yeah. undergraduates. Oh, that's so interesting. And it changed my whole course of my life. So then what did you do? I became, the, I became, <laughs> I became the vice provost for external affairs where I linked Cornell's Ithaca campus. The main campus is 246 miles away from the medical school, right. which is in Manhattan. Right. I got on that campus. I'll never forget the first day standing on the Cornell <laughs> Ithaca campus, and I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> I really want to feel the energy of undergraduates. And I became the dean of the College of Human Ecology. And, and that was it. And then I became the provost at Temple, and then I came back to my roots at CUNY. And you're back with the undergraduates. How many I graduate students are there at CUNY? There are, a, well, I don't know what CUNY is. City graduate. College, we I mean, have, City College. Uh, we have about 3,200 graduate students That's at a City lot. College. Yeah. 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 But it is the energy. And they're so lucky to have somebody like you. I mean, are all oh, college you. presidents this way? <laughs> I like to think so. The ones, you know, we have great, lively discussions. Yeah. They've been wonderful colleagues, yeah. you know, and we're all here because of the same reason, because we love this system and we know that this system provides an opportunity for students that they can't get at other places. So how do you cope with the budget? Are you being cut again this year? Yes, I'm sure we are. Um, you know the way in which What's we... the first thing that goes? <laughs> that was, that's an interesting... Um, that was an interesting thing. What we did is we've been working with the deans. My, this is, I'm only talking about me because I don't yeah, know. Other right. colleges have other needs. Right. Um, but my priority was to not affect or impede the student's mission and to not affect the faculty. 
so we looked at administrative reorganizations, uh, you know, trying to scrimp and save everywhere we can. And we've been working with the deans now to get their priorities for what do they need to do because we really do want to continue to hire faculty. You can't stop hiring faculty. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you become more of right. truthfully. Yeah. But you need to do it strategically. And so we're constantly um, looking for ways to economize that won't impact the student mission. When you're hiring faculty, often that involves fundraising. Yes. Because you, you can do it by endowment. How, how, how much of your, your money comes from individuals or, or corporations or the private sector? Oh, okay, uh, about half of our half of our tuition, half of our money comes from the state tuition, other other dollars. Mm -hmm. um, the other gets split between fundraising and the grants that we mm -hmm. bring in, the grants and contracts. We bring in about seventy million dollars in grants mm -hmm. and contracts from our scientists, um, and as the it, and we've got to increase yeah. the pool on both ends uh, and. Our donors, our alums, have been wonderful. As you know, we've surpassed 385 million, and I have I have the previous president, Greg Williams. Uh, president Williams did a phenomenal job, and I'm continuing. And that. he's helping you. Uh, he's been. I, I actually saw him the other night. He's been wonderful. He's happy. But you know what he did is he set a platform. He did wonderful things for it. Um, we quickly, because we're almost out. Sure. I remember when there was an open enrollment. What are the requirements now for getting into City College? Oh, um, are there? Yeah, there are requirements, yes. We have a, a, an SAT minimum. It depends on the college that you're in. Um, from 9 to 950 is our SAT minimum. Um, there's also a GPA minimum. It's a very complex formula, right. actually. So, Are there interviews? Can you interview a cl whole class? No. No, because yeah, the, yeah. the admissions is still yeah. CUNY Central, right. and see. then they come I through. See. Well, thank you so much. I'd like to call you President Lisa. I know you're changing to President Coico, but it's been a delight, and I'm sure that all the students at City College are, can only be grateful for the, the leader and the faculty that they have, so thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's been a delight to be Good. here. Is there any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore? Please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.